I thought I would make this video featuring three Stuart Triple Expansion steam engines that I have. The engine running on screen at the moment is currently the best of the three by far and you can see it running in more detail at the end of the video. The first of the three triple expansion engines that I'm going to show in this video was kindly sent to me by a man in America so that I could finish it. The engine was built many years ago by a friend of his father and it's built to quite a high standard. The motion work on this engine is very well made and by motion work I mean every part that moves. And on a triple expansion engine, a lot of the parts move. Some of them are inside the engine and you can't see them. So it's very important to make sure that the cylinders are very well lubricated. The only way I can oil the cylinders currently is to inject some oil into the steam chest of the high pressure cylinder. This oil will find its way from the high pressure cylinder to the intermediate cylinder and then to the low pressure cylinder. I'm curious to see whether the engine runs. And the only way I can find this out is to connect my compressed air line and supply the engine with some air. A triple expansion engine is not self-starting. But in this clip I'm not trying to start it. With the air line attached I'm trying to make sure that the oil goes through all three cylinders. I turn the pressure of the compressed air up to 40 pounds per square inch. And here I'm trying to make it go. Unfortunately it doesn't run because the valve timing is incorrect. It nearly goes but not quite. When I push the drop arms the other way to put it into reverse it doesn't even try, so the valve timing is well out. What's this? The engine suddenly started working. In this clip you can clearly see how loose the valve gear is. Each and every one of the drop arms needs to be fixed to the main rod and the fun part will be securing the drop arms to the rod. I have my small Bosch electric drill firmly clamped to the crankshaft and I'm rotating the engine to allow the oil to find its way through all of the cylinders. Here you can see what's turning the engine and I tightened the chuck so it didn't mark the crankshaft and you can see how much effort it's taking to remove it. How does a triple expansion steam engine work? I will try and explain it in a simple and non-technical manner. Triple expansion engines run very differently on steam to compressed air but for workbench testing compressed air is very convenient. And here the airline is connected to the inlet of the steam chest of the high pressure cylinder. Then what happens? After it's done its work, the exhaust from the high pressure cylinder connects to the steam chest inlet of the intermediate pressure cylinder. And then when the intermediate cylinder exhausts, that exhausts into the steam chest inlet of the largest of the three, the low pressure cylinder. In case you didn't understand that, I'll do it one more time. This is the airline. This is the exhaust pipe from the high pressure cylinder which connects to the intermediate cylinder's steam chest and then the intermediate cylinder's exhaust connects to the steam chest of the low pressure cylinder. What about a bit of slow motion? Triple expansion engine number two did not run. I will fix this, but I want to complete the one that you've just seen first. I did manage to get this engine to run, but it does need quite a lot of attention, and this series is called a triple expansion steam engine that needs some attention. You may have noticed that I do like Stuart triple expansion engines, and now I have three of them. I'm thinking that I can make this run, it will be quite rough, but now that the valve gear for the high pressure cylinder is in approximately the right place. I'm going to see if it's possible. And immediately I can feel that the valve timing is out to start with. Don't forget that these type of triple expansion engines are not self-starting. You have to apply the pressure, whether it be steam or air, and then rotate the crankshaft until it goes. The play on that reversing shaft is diabolical. I thought it would persevere. I've turned the pressure up to about 80 pounds per square inch. And now, with a bit of luck, it should go. Well, it's running. It sounds a bit like a pneumatic drill. 
I'll move the reversing lever and see if I can get it to sound a bit better. Just about every mechanical part of this engine is loose and some of the parts don't line up very well so I'm really looking forward to the challenge. Why did I manage to get it to run so quickly? Well, it's what I do. I knew that the main problem was that the first expansion link that controls the admission of the air or steam to the high pressure cylinder was not anywhere near in the right place. But by using the lock tack to hold it in place and with a long taper pin just loosely pushed into the hole which I will remove later, the engine is now running after a fashion. Here it is running in slow motion. Saving the best till last, this is triple expansion engine number 3. I don't really need to say much about this engine, please continue to watch the video, it speaks for itself. The first clips show it in the workshop of the builder. The Stuart model's triple expansion engine is a thing of great beauty. It was built by a man in Scotland called Ronnie Maul, no relation to Darth Maul off the Star Wars film. Ronnie's surname has an E at the end. These photographs that you're currently looking at were sent to me by Ronnie via email and as you can see it is beautiful, really, really, really beautiful. Ronnie and I agreed a price and I decided I was going to pick up the engine rather than risk posting. And here I am on the road to Scotland. The first steam to hit the engine turns to water so I'm having to turn it over a few times to clear this water. And oil and water goes everywhere. In any case, in no time at all the engine starts to run as the water clears and gets blown to exhaust. It seems to run very well indeed on steam. It's a bit looser than it was when I first bought it because I've run it quite a few times on compressed air just to run it in properly. You can't beat a steam test for showing up any leaks and as you can see there's a bit of a leak from around the high pressure cylinder oiler but this is nothing. There's also a very slight weep from one of the bolts on the high pressure cylinder and surprisingly one of the bolts on the steam chest for the low pressure cylinder. Don't worry I'm going to stop talking very shortly and let you see and hear the sound of the engine. One thing is apparent the high pressure cylinder gland needs tightening up a little bit. You can see this very clearly because it's running in slow motion. I can't really say any more, this engine is wonderful. Ronnie Maul who built it really does know how to build steam engines. In the following clips you'll see it running in forward and reverse and I show that yes it notches up as well. Nothing much seemed to happen when I ran it on compressed air and opened the drain cocks on the low pressure cylinder. So now I'm going to try it under steam. And when I open the drain cock on the low pressure cylinder, as you can clearly see it spews forth much steam and water. And so does the medium pressure cylinder, a bit more steam and water, and the high pressure cylinder covers both me and the camera lens with oily water. It's definitely time for me to stop talking. Thanks for watching so far, and I hope you're finding it very well entertaining. Stay well, and thanks for watching.
please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.